All right, I'm ready to get started when you guys are. What was that, Cleric? What? Oh, your uh, uh, Discord said that you that um, it your mic had picked up sound, but nothing came out, so I just, I just wasn't sure if it was just being weird. Can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. I just, I just thought that it had I just thought that it cut out for a second. All right, so Troy, were you Troy, were you saying something? Just saying that's ready. Oh, I can't hear him. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Something's probably wrong. Give me a sec. I can't hear Troy. Uh, channel. Oh, let's see. For some reason, it only lists you as being in here. Here, Troy, uh, here, try leaving this channel and coming back. Troy, can you hear me? Here. Start changing your audio, uh, input. Input? Yeah, sometimes, uh, your, sometimes your, um, audio things will get messed up, so you just have to, like, Change your audio something to that isn't default, and then change it back to default for whatever else you're using. Okay. Troy, try saying something now. Yeah, no, I still can't hear him. Here, I'm gonna try leaving this real quick too. Troy's playing Sonic Mania while we're doing this. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Sweet. Also, nice playing Sonic I Media. <laughs> I, I couldn't hear you asking me that question, huh? but I could hear you. <laughs> Alright, so we ready to begin? Yeah, and if my button pushing, you can hear it. Just let me know. I'll turn it off. Um, because of last time, a lot of the connection issues, I'm, um, I'm, I'm on Discord on my phone, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. Alright. So I'll have like, more like phone service rather than just the straight... Uh, insecure internet that my school has so all right sounds good so do you want me to do the introduction or does anyone else want to or i don't know what the specific introduction is so i'll let you do that i don't have all right here i'll make something up hello everyone we're back with another episode of the audio dumpster fire i'm jordan i'm here with my friends troy and faceless cleric and today we are talking about fighting games so before i start going on my little rant about whatever fighting game topic we get onto. Do any of you guys have anything you'd like to say? Um, people who spam buttons suck. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I am a person who spams buttons. You suck immensely. <laughs> uh, good times. Now, like, if it's your first time playing, like, give you a little excitement. But if you played before, and, like, I just, then you are absolute scum. Okay. End of discussion. I've been, play I've, been for I've been playing for a few years. Then you're... What is wrong with you? Why would you... You're the worst kind of person. I don't understand. Who hurts you? <laughs> oh, boy. Burn. Okay, so this is actually... I can actually turn... Like, this actually leads into a legitimate discussion. Or, like... Well, this is already a legitimate discussion. But, like, an actual, like... Problem that's happening with, like, fighting games now. At least in my opinion. So... Two games are coming out relatively soon: Dragon Ball Z Fighters and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. They both have something called auto combos, which I think are really dumb. Kind of like what Troy was talking about. Basically, if you press one button, usually, like if you're using Xbox, the X button, or if you're using PS4 or whatever, I think it's like Square maybe. But you press that button three times, and it goes into a super from there. 
I don't. So you just have to spam one button, you automatically get a super. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, in which and which game is this in? Uh, I'm not. There's probably more, but the ones I know of that are coming out soon are Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and the Dragon Ball Z game that's being made by uh, Arxis. Dragon Ball Z, no, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> I already have a solution for that, and that is. Guilty Gear XRD. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I've never heard of that before in my life. <laughs> well, it's a it, it's a great fighting game, in my opinion. But one thing I like because. The reason, so I'll just explain why I button mash. It's because I can't. Learn, I just can't figure out how to use actual controls for fighting games. I'm just trash at fighting games. Well, you're also playing one of the most like complex like, fighting games out there, like right off the bat. Listen, I can't even play simple fighting games that well either. It's just not my thing. You'd love dive kick then. So what I like about Guilty Gear is that it has uh, when when you choose your character, it has two different modes you can play as. I forget what they're called, but essentially one is like playing like a traditional fighting game where you have to press all the buttons and then the second one where it does like auto combos and stuff. And why I like that is because when I would play with my friends that are really good with fighting games, you know, traditionally, and then I could play on easy mode and I could still just be at an equal level with them fun together instead of me just getting curb stomped by everyone. You know what I mean? All right, yeah, I, I can kind of see that. It's just... I can I can see like competitive. Yeah, I, you can't you can't use easy mode and competitive and everything. So yeah, I can see what I can see what you mean. That's a good solution. But when there's like things like MVC Infinite and Dragon Ball, and the new Dragon Ball game, where it's just kind of you just it's just there always. That's kind of where my problem comes from. It like there's also like a character in the new in the current Street Fighter where you just instead of doing like the motions for his attacks, you just press like two punch buttons and you have an attack going and I hate that because it's not like Oh yeah you're 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 absolutely right with that. I was just saying that I I already have a I already have an example of how to do it right though. Yeah. You just make it an option. But yeah, I know what you mean. Also if if you have a hard time learning traditional fighting game control, I think you'd love uh dive kick. That's a great game. Love it. So, you can buy like a giant like pro controller for it that's just two like giant buttons yeah i've seen I, I, I've, I've seen that controller it's amazing <laughs> i want to get one to play like i want i want to see someone try to beat dark souls with that controller because if someone can do it with the donkey kong country bongos i think they can do it with that i i haven't heard of that one i did hear about uh guitar hero the, yeah the guitar <laughs> hero one. Oh, that's that's amazing. Well. oh but 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 speaking of fighting games though, that does remind me. I did hear that I did see that someone uh, managed to beat uh, what was it Soul Calibur Five? I think it was with nothing but a fishing rod. Uh, what? I know, I know this though. isn't I know this isn't a fighting game, but I've seen people like on Twitch play like Overwatch using like a microwave. I thought that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, like they hook up special like wiring, and so like certain buttons are commanded to do this and that. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing. I'm not. Gonna Did you lie. see the person who played Genji with a with a a, a Nerf foam sword? That, that was great. Yeah, and I thought it was funny just watching someone play Doom on a printer. Wait, what? A printer? No, I, I know. What? Wait, is it like the original Doom or like the new Doom? Like the original Doom? You imported. That's that's pretty awesome, honestly. Those videos, it's amazing. They, people port them to like everything. I've seen play people people play in like graphing calculators, printers. That's insane. Like, uh, I think some ported it to like a like a fridge. <laughs> I'm sorry, a fridge. There's like a computer on it. I think someone did that. I don't remember though. Okay, one. Well, why does a fridge need a computer? Like, I mean, okay, like. I mean, like, it's one of those smart ones where you can, like, control, like, the temperature and, like, this and that and, like, special settings for, like, the smart home type stuff. It's one of those. So, wait, you're telling it's, me like, super expensive. that we have smart fridges now? I'm pretty sure, unless I'm wrong, what? which I could very well be, but... I, I don't understand why. Like... Uh, it's because you can. Uh, okay. Oh, another thing I thought was pretty great is I saw someone uh, recreate the soundtrack for Doom using nothing but a bunch of floppy drives. <laughs> I got a bunch of those from work the, like a couple weeks ago. 
Like they were cleaning. They were cleaning. Uh, floppy. Di- oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, they were cleaning out uh, the old supply closet. And they and they just found this box full of floppy disks, and they're like, "We literally have no use for this." So I, I just got them. Nice. But if you have if you have enough floppy drives, you can you can make music with them if you have the programming skills. Well, that's pretty cool. I don't know how much is enough. I, I've so. seen people like make the Doom soundtrack. I've seen people make. Or I've seen people play uh, "Still Alive." Um, play uh, "We Are Number One." Or <laughs> yeah, you have this. Old technology that most people, that most like things don't support anymore, and you use it to play a meme song from a child's TV show. What and else right. would you do it? What else would you use it for? I mean, come on, let's be realistic here. <laughs> oh, good point. Good point. Uh, All right, but getting back on track to fighting games, the game, the fighting game I'm looking forward to is coming out next. Yeah, there's a plays blue cross tag battle. Okay, so I don't like I don't like most of the games that Arxis makes, which is the company that's making it. But I'm really excited for this game because everything I've seen from Blaze Blue looks actually good. I've never played Blaze Blue, but it looks actually good to me. And this one has Ruby in it, yeah. so I want to play it. Yeah, I, I was I was interested by that, but I, I just want to play it because it's made by Arc System, and I like I like their. See, I I feel Arxis as a developer is overhyped. Everyone says that, like Guilty Gear is, and Blaze Blue are like the end all be alls of like games. The problem I have though is like fighting games. So I'm not that into them. I just or, yeah. like them better than most fighting games. No, I, I know. I understand that. I just my problem is that they're kind of overhyped in my opinion. What are What are y'all's uh, favorite fighting game? If you don't mind me asking, real quick. Here, uh, Cleric, you can go first on that one, because... Sorry. I Soul Calibur. I like that series. Oh, really? You like Soul Calibur? I didn't know that. Nice. That was actually, like, one of hmm. the first, like, besides Tekken, like, Ford and Arcade near my house, that was actually the first, like, fighting game I ever played with Soul Calibur. What about you, Troy? I'd probably have to go with Smash Brothers. All right. That's it's the one I've fun. played for like eons. Kind of fun, but it's really hard for me to learn. Even harder for most in most fighting games. Well, let's go to Smash Bros. I make a lot of... Sorry, you go try. Yeah, it's um and like the most recent Smash Brothers. Like I know, like I'm a hardcore Metroid fan. Yeah. So I always main Samus, whether she's like good in that version or not. But like I'm not like I'm not like pro like I'm not gonna say that but like and a lot of the um like in like in the most recent Smash I play I play Samus a lot as like an aerial character and like I piss a lot of my friends off just because like I know how to exploit how to like in the air and juggle them so like I get enough points on them it's like you just gotta like even if your character's not good or even if they're like not like the best highest uh, highest tier if like you know how to use them like you can still have a great advantage. The real question is though, do you play normal Samus or Zero Suit Samus? Normal. Well, I play I I, I play both, and like I play other characters, but I enjoy uh, regular Samus. All right. Better than Zero Suit, even though I know Zero Suit is like top tier. Zero Suit's actually my main in four, so that's I think it's kind of funny that we both play the same character, just different versions. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, my character I play I really play that much, and the new version is just Little Mac. I love Little oh, Mac. Jeez. So, Jay, what's your favorite fighting game? So, before I say this, I know there's going to be if we actually get someone to comment, there's probably going to be someone talking about how I have a shitty opinion and how this isn't a, how this isn't a good game, because that's what the internet general consensus is. But my favorite is actually Street Fighter Five, because that's a shitty opinion, and this isn't a good podcast now. Thank you. <laughs> or, oh, I'm going to have to bleep that out. Gosh darn it. Again. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, thank you. Um, the re- So I'm going to get my reasoning real quick because I I think I have a valid re- I I think I have a valid reasoning. People will disagree. Anyway, the main point, Street Fighter V is just... I've played fighting games for most of my life. <coughs> I've played fighting games for uh, most of my life. Like... Starting with Smash Bros, playing Tekken 4, this arcade, 
and then getting like Soul Calibur for my Xbox and so on. Well, like, not. I've never really been like grabbed by a, like. Not, I love playing fighting games, but they never really caught my one specific one. Never really caught my attention. It kind of happened with um, Injust Injustice when I got it on PC a couple years back, but it's, even then it was still like. I was done in, like, less than a day. Like, I didn't want to play it anymore. And I've only, like, played it since with, like, friends. I got Street I got hmm. Street Fighter V on sale uh, a couple months ago during the Steam sale. I wasn't sure about it because I was like, and it has mixed reviews. It's not, I don't know if this will be good. And I played it for, like, an hour with my brother. And then it, I was sucked in. Like, I just love the way it feels, like, the gameplay of it. I understand. I understand all the little nuances of it. Well, like not all of them. Cause I'm still, I'm still like kind of bad at it. But like all like the little like things that make it different from other like f kind of fighting games. I understand like how they work and like because Street Fighter has a big priority on like projectiles. So like a majority of the cast uses them, whereas the character I play actually has none. So it makes it a little interesting. But yeah, just. <laughs> It kind of. It, sorry, what were you saying, Troy? I was like, "What character? What character is that?" So I um, I play Cami, because and okay. so like the thing is, in a lot of fighting games, my play style is rush down, like run in, hit them as hard as you can, and keep going. But usually, like the char they have to be like. Usually, those characters have low health, like Zero Suit Samus and Smash. Even though there's no health mm -hmm. in that, they're just low, like you have a better chance of getting knocked out, knocked out at, like, a lower percentage. and just Yeah, because, like, it depends on the weight of their character. Like, the lighter they are, I think it's easier to hit them off. Right. So, like, that's just kind of been my play style, like, forever. So I, st I started out trying to play, like, Rashid and Chun-Li. Uh, Rashid is a new character. He's, um... He, he, he controls weight. Yeah, no, He's pretty I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Yeah, I, just, I tried playing them, and they, they felt nice. They just didn't feel right. And so I didn't, when I was going through the character stories to get, earn fight money to unlock new characters, I did camis, and I just, I loved the way she played, and it was really nice. Huh. Yeah. I do have to say, though, like, the game isn't perfect. There's a lot of things I would change about it. Like that one character I was talking about earlier with the uh, double button inputs instead of traditional inputs, I would just either remove him entirely or change his moveset, because... He's, I mean, he's a low tier character. It just, I feel, it just feels annoying when you see like them do a super move and then know like, oh, they didn't have to like do the same. They could do it quicker because it's not the same motion. And like, I don't know, just kind of. Also, there's this one character that I, I sent. Um, I showed you guys the tweet about it, but um, the, there was a new character that was released recently called Manat. I think I pronounced that right. Anyway. Uh, one of her moves are two orbs that fly forward above her head, and they're supposed to hit aerial opponents. There's one character named Abigail in the game who <laughs> broke everything, because when you fire those orbs at them, they just go right through them. Also, there's another... You guys know Dulcip, I'm assuming. And when he kicks up... When he does his mm -hmm. upward kick that is supposed to like hit airborne targets, it just goes right through his head. And... Abigail has broken so much, and I hate him for it. Good lord almighty. Sorry, I just kind of ranted for like a solid five minutes there. <laughs> it's all good. I, I was never the biggest Street Fighter fan, but like, I do know that like the character I enjoyed playing as the most was Vega, I think his name is. Yeah, he's the claw guy, right? I learned how to play him. Yeah. I don't know why, I, just, I, I enjoyed the way he looked like when I was younger. Yeah. Like compared to a lot of the other characters, I guess. So speaking, yeah, of, yeah. Speaking of, like, I'm going. Can I can I drop a little bit of uh, lore knowledge on you on Vega? Yeah, sure. So Vega's name was originally Balrog, who's another name of another character in the English release. I, I know. I, I remember this story. Yeah, <laughs> and then the name of M Bison in the original was actually Vega. And then Balrog in the English it was actually M. Bison, which was a play, which was name was Mike Bison, which is a play on Mike Tyson. 
huh. it had to be changed for multiple reasons coming to the U.S. Because one, they didn't want to get sued by M- by Mike Tyson for for having a boxer that looked that named Mike Bison. So, and also the American team felt like Vega wasn't an intimidating enough name for the main villain. So they gave M. Bison to who used to be Vega named named who used to be M. Bison Balrog. And then they gave Vega to who used to be Balrog. Why they chose him to change? Who knows? But that's what they did. And now in the now when talking about him internationally, they're referred to as dictator, boxer, and claw. So fun times. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, a lot of weird things happen. Yeah, I've only played Street Fighter Four, and and the two characters I usually played is either Zangia for Makoto. Dude, I love Makoto. She's um she's one of the three characters I played in uh, Street Fighter Three. I, I love her. Seth, because he is like one of the most broken characters in that game. Okay, I have some things to say about Seth, but I'm gonna let Troy speak because it looks like he wants to say something. Well, like who who who's who is Seth? Like I'm I'm sorry, I only I know I know some like the main staple character. Here, I'll staple character. I apologize. Here, it's but... okay. I'll send I'll send Seth a picture of Seth in the uh, chat. But um, okay. Yeah, basically, basically he's like a robot, I think, and he has like a, a like a yin yang in his stomach, and he has pretty much the move set of like every character in the game, or something like that. Huh. So. There's a lot of design choices in every Street Fighter game, because I've started playing, like, all of them, like, since I got five, and Seth has probably my least favorite design out of everyone. Like, legit, I legitimately just do not like Seth's design. You say 36-pack of abs that go all the way up to his, his neck? Yeah. Oh, that dude. Yeah. Okay. It just, it doesn't look, like, I know he's supposed to be, like, some weird, like, science science thing, but there's a way to do that right. Like, look at Gil from Street Fighter 3. I'll send a picture of him, too. He looks weird, but he looks cool. Seth just looks dumb. Like, my opinion. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting salty about Seth. That's okay. <laughs> Here. And this is this is Gil, by the way. That is, I, I think Seth looks better personally. Uh, I agree. I like, but I mean, I don't know. I've always felt like I, I like Gil better for like one kind of the techn- technological like aspect he represents. Also, just because I really like like the half and half like motif of him. It reminds me. Of, it reminds me of an episode of the original series of Star Trek. To be honest. <laughs> Wait, really? Another picture. I'm sure everyone that's listening to this podcast is really going to hate us for this. No, I'll just put I'll just put the pictures we use here and put them pictures. put them in the video, for, like when we're talking about it. But yeah, like I think she she's actually got to load up this stuff. It's all good. But yeah, like I just ne- I never liked Seth's design because like like you were talking about the 36 pack up to his neck and then like. I don't know, like, he just looked unsettling. Like, not in, like, a good, like, this is a creepy character. It's more like, this looks like an abomination to humanity. Kind of, like. Oh, yeah, I, I see what, yeah, I see what you mean. If that's one of the alien races from Star Trek. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. That makes sense. I see why you'd associate Gil with that. Agreed. So... Continuing on the like, topics of character design, what is your guy? Who is your guys' favorite character design from like a fighting game? Like, like I mean, like how they look. Hmm. Uh, hmm. That's tough. Oda from Soul Calibur Four. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Wait, clear. Say that. Say that again, real quick. I only heard. I only heard from Soul Calibur Four. I said Yoda from Soul Calibur Four. Oh Yoda! Oh Yoda! <laughs> oh no, dude, he was so broken. <laughs> it was no. Okay, so th- for those of you that don't know, 
Yoda and Darth Vader were characters that were in Soul Calibur Actually, was... What was that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know when I got it. It was actually Yoda and the uh, Secret Apprentice from uh, Force Unleashed. Oh yeah, yeah, he was version. a he was a character too. I just like I know Darth Vader was like the PS4 exclusive one, where or PS3. Oh, sorry, that explains it. Yeah, but um, so there was Yoda, Darth Vader, and the Apprentice, Apprentice, Apprentice. Apprentice there we go, from uh, from uh, the Force Awakens were all downloadable DLC characters because Soul Calibur is famous for its like guest characters, kind of. Well, Force Unleashed. Yeah, oh, Force Unleashed, sorry. My bad. Well, Yoda, because he's so small, was completely broken because no one could hit him normally. And he was fast. And it was just bad because it, he was completely broken and he was banned from, like, every tournament, I think. <laughs> What do you, That's amazing. How, how do you guys feel about, like, from, like, pr- professional, like, kind of, like, fighting game things? How do you feel about banning characters? Um, I think it depends on, like, obviously the character. Because, like, if, if a character just has something that's, like, completely impossible to be, like, I just, like, I don't know, maybe they give him, like, a moveset that's just, like, I don't necessarily say the move set. I don't know. I guess maybe they have a combination that like it, you can't really break out of. It's like it's an easy way to cheese it. Like it doesn't take a lot of skill, or like that's you know kind of the point of like the professional tournaments. I think then like you could like ban the character from the tournament. But like if it's just like a character that's like just like really good, but like you know it's not like impossible to master, and it's not like a bunch of like, BS. Like if you have to like do a bunch of crazy combos and like stuff to do good, I think you should let them in. All right, cleric, your thoughts. I don't know, as long as the character, or, I mean, as long as the character has an unfair advantage, and you have to ban it. Alright. Fair enough. Because, like, I mean... What about you, Jay? Uh, like, okay. <laughs> my my philosophy on it is that, like, going back to Soul Calibur 4 with Yoda, the competitive scene for that game would have been garbage if Yoda wasn't banned. So, I, I see, I, I fully support it, because if there's a character, like... Going like in Street Fighter, I think I forget which one, but there was one one of the versions of Street Fighter Two. The one had um, Akuma as a playable character. He outclassed everyone by miles. Like the way um tier lists usually work is that they're uh, given numbers based on how many like good matchups they have, or like numbers of like like the wins that are. Hold on, I'm trying to. I'm getting confused. Give me a sec. It's um. Like, so, there's, like, you're giving a number, each character is given a number rating against another character, ranging from 110 against how good they can do against that character. Most range from 4 to 6, because, it's you know, no character is going to, like, most characters aren't going to win every single time, so it's going to be, like, a 4 to 6 kind of, like, even area, right? Akuma in this version mm-hmm. had, like, 9s, almost universally. Good God. Yeah, so, like, if that had been allowed in the pro scene, then Street Fighter 2 would have sucked. But, I mean, if you're going... Like, same with Gil. He was completely broken, and he was banned, and that was okay. I think now, because fighting games don't try to... Don't have to, like, fight for your quarters. They don't have to make boss characters so insanely hard. So, I think that's why less characters have been getting banned from fighting games as time has gone on. Because you've had, they've been moving away from that kind of thing. Hmm. All right. Well, I have a question for the two. You know, either you guys play the the Simpsons wrestling game. Yes, I have not played the Simpsons wrestling game. Ned Flanders is OP. Literally, best fighting game you will ever play. I, I can I change my answers to the favorite fighting game question from earlier? Because I think I ha- I forgot about this one. But listen, only if you play as Ned Flanders. <laughs> Ned Flanders is the best. Hi, Diddly Ho, Neighborino. I'm going on some. I, I had a rhyme for this, but then I didn't. Crap. <laughs> Keep it out. No, I'm just going. I'm just going to leave it because it's it's funnier to laugh at my failures than <laughs> failures than just take it out. I know. This is a joke. Okay. What? Wait, Troy. What'd you say? Oh, Jay. Oh. 
<laughs> it's like that sad comment. It's funnier to laugh at my failures. Rip, that's no. <laughs> Are we gonna put it in the L bank? <laughs> if you want, if you feel like it qualifies. <laughs> All right, so cleric. Uh, we have. So, a... Listen, I listen. I'd laugh at my own failures too, but I don't want to laugh at my whole life. Oh, that's an L. It's going in the bank. So just to explain that little in joke, there's um. We have this group chat we've been a part of for like what, like four years now. Yeah, four years. Dude. Where um, kind of recently, uh, they started a joke with some of our other friends about putting all of your losses into like a bank, aka the L bank. And they have this whole like yeah. system set up for it with like different degrees of L's, and I thought it's just it's really funny in my opinion. Your boy right here is the founder, so I know all about it. I can tell you all the ratings for your different L's. Quick, give me. Okay, so we have we have small, regular, large, super, mega, and chaos L's. Small is one point. Regular is five. Large is ten. Um, super is fifty. Mega is a hundred, and chaos is five hundred points. Now you have like your um, small inconveniences that ranges from the L's that are in um, uh, what's it called? Uh, small, regular, and large. And then you have stuff that's kind of like you know a bit more like oh that's really not good. Like I'm kind of screwed here. It's like mega and super. But then like if like if you have something that can like potentially like really be like a destructive to your life or like someone dies, like that's a chaos L, which is worth five hundred points. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I've almost died before. Does that, does that count? Uh, I mean, you're w, alive, like so it's a, more, that's more of a W than anything, because you're alive. That'd be like a mega L. It'd be like 100 points. So you came close, but you're still living, so... You're still breathing, just barely what you're breathing. Speaking of, that's kind of like back, bringing it full circle back to the topic of fighting games... That that moment when your opponent supers and then like you survive with a sliver of health and then you come back and win the fight, that is one of the most satisfying moments, like in anything. Not for not for the other person, it isn't. I know, I know, but for you, it's like they did their best and they couldn't succeed, and that is like it just feels good to pull through with that, in my opinion. It's just like that. Insane comeback you never expected to happen. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you guys think of, like, how big of a point of a role in fighting games do you think mind games take? I think... I think you can do a lot because, like, there's people, like, I've played against, and then, you know, like, once you, like, you beat them, and then it's, like, there's some people that, like, they'll get, like, salty, and then, like, you can tell that they're, like, trying to really focus on your move set, what you're doing, your pattern, like, they're trying to, like, figure you out, like, they're not trying to, like, let you keep doing the same stuff to them over and over, but, like, if you can, if you can continue to do that same stuff over and over, and they continue to get frustrated and just can't do it, then, like, you've already won, because once people get so frustrated to the point where they, like, they can't properly play, like, it's game over right or there's nothing else to do after that i'm too trash to know well like you don't really have to know it's more about just like understanding mentality than knowing like fighting games like the same can be said about overwatch where like if you t if you can tilt the other team enough they're not going to play as well and here it's easier because you only have to tilt one person yeah that's why when <laughs> so i don't do this in online matches because there's a lot more factors in online matches than there are in, like, in-person matches that can affect this. But when I'm, like, doing an in-person match, I make it a point to whenever I... Because, like, Street Fighter has a stun bar where if you hit them enough times, they'll get stunned for a short period. I make it a point mm -hmm. to not attack them during that stun, like, in-person, but to just taunt. Because I've found that, like, at least in-person, online, it doesn't work so much because, you know, something can happen. They probably won't notice it or whatever. But in person, it pisses people off, and they don't. They play, they play like worse, and then in the next couple, couple of, like the rest of that round and into the next round. It's just something I found kind of like useful. Yeah, I know what you mean because they get frustrated and they're like, you know, it's like they're tired of you being like cocky and like this and that. But then, you know, like you're you're being cocky for a reason usually. Well, it's, it's not. I, I say it's more. Le I say it's less being cocky and more just trying to throw them off, cause like, I cause I try to like I still try to be like um, cause 
I try to set reasonable expectations for myself when I play like fighting games because I know that I'm not the best. Like I know I'm not going to like do it like super good, but if I can just make them question their skills for even a second, that gives me a chance to do to like go in and destroy them. It's kind of like it's kind of like why teabagging is a thing is a thing that a lot of pros do is because it messes with their head, like you're like if you're like sitting on the other side of your opponent has more health than you and is like out of your range and is just sitting there teabagging it's gonna make you mad mm-hmm. yeah I don't, understand, I don't understand why teabagging gets people upset because it's a sign of disrespect well, it's like... yeah it makes sense to me I mean you know the whole purpose behind it but it's more of like the irrational like anger that comes with it like you know someone's disrespecting you. Some people are going to like just blow that off and be like, whatever. Others are going to get mad. Yeah, because like people consider I, I, it with being like, oh, like they think they're better than me. It's like, oh, they killed me. It's like, watch, I'm like, I'm gonna destroy them next round. Like they're not gonna do this to me again. And then they do it again. Sure, because I just like I just like to troll people. Well, see, that's like that's your thing. Is like you understand it because you like to do it. Some people they don't understand it because like. There's this thing called the scrub mentality where people will think no this is this is the real thing like there's articles written about this but um oh, right. yeah but um it's like it's like that one friend where like you're playing and you'll do some you'll do some crazy thing that they've never seen before and they'll say you can't do that because it's unfair just because they don't know what it is it's like that kind of thing like they'll say like oh teabagging is unsportsmanlike you shouldn't do it even though it's kind of like a staple of some pros like tactics like the fi- like the finals of Street Fighter 5's Evo this year had like the grand finals had um the champion like for this year like this he um mid fight he just started like teabagging at one point and it, he's the champion of Street Fighter like for Evo this year so it's like it is totally a sportsman like thing to do I've mm. seen people get unreasonably tilted when I just teabag them in Halo. <laughs> oh yeah, I was having um, Troy, you know, you know Devin, right? I th- I think people actually yeah. wanted to fight me yeah. like IRL because of it. All right, I think I know Devin. Uh, he used to be like Oblivion, like that used to be his like screen name. Oh oh yeah, I went to high school with him. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah. Well, we we actually got in a conversation the other day about um. We got in, like, a full-on debate about whether, like, teabagging was, like, an actual, like, legitimate thing that should be done. It was top quality. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think it depends on the game. I usually don't like to do it first, but then, like, if other people do it, maybe I'll do it back. Like I said... Or I just won't do it at all. Yeah. Like I said, I don't like to do it, like, on and like, online against people, but if I'm playing against, like, people next to me, I will do, I will do it. Yeah, same. Yeah. Like, even at, like, those tournaments that like, I've told you about, that, like, the locals have gone to, like, I have t- I have done my taunt thing during those, and it has had amazing results. So, I think that there's definitely, like, I mean, fighting games are, like... It's fun just to dance while you're, while you're on the payload in Overwatch. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that is totally, I do that all the time. Uh, good times. A shield right in front of you too. It's even better. <laughs> I have a I have a Arisa's dance emote, so I'll just throw a shield down in front of me and just dance while they come running at me. Nice. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm bronze in Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> You're bronze. Oh, okay. that's an L. Okay. So, I am. So I started playing mid season three. I did my placements in season three, got silver. Next season is when Blizzard started their whole, oh, we're going to place you below your actual skill so that way you it'll feel better when you climb up. I got placed in bronze because of this. I got placed. <laughs> I got placed with the same Torbjorn thrower for about ten games or more. And the reason I say thrower is because he just built turrets and spawn and then would throw himself off cliffs. And. Yikes. I lost 500 SR. So I was pretty deep in, uh, in bronze I, I, at that point. 
I kind of I kind of have a different perspective on how or how Blizzard did that because uh, I I joined season two and I got placed in like platinum. Like I was like a hundred points away from that. Yeah. I just I just lost like every single game because like my team didn't play together. But, like I dropped down by like a thousand points. Jesus. And that was how I stayed for like two seasons or something. That is a- Since I don't, I don't remember. And then um, finally started winning games again. Now I'm now I'm just back up back into gold. Just got back. All right, nice. I'm actually because like season six started two days ago at the time of recording this, so I might actually like finish my I actually like do my placements in a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if when I'll play Overwatch again because my the internet at my school is not the best. Yeah, I can I can understand why. Uh, yeah, so it's a little difficult. Speaking of like Blizzard and like Overwatch, you know what I think would be really fun. What? Like take Overwatch the concept fighting you? Uh, uh, kind of. I was gonna say take the like the purpose or like the point of Heroes of the Storm. Where they like just mix together a ton of Blizzard characters, and then and put them in like a MOBA, but instead of a MOBA, put them in a fighting game. Because I really want to punch uh, the Lich King in the face as uh, Rainer from Starcraft. Yeah, <laughs> I just think it'd be I just think it'd be great. That sounds interesting. Yeah. All right, so. You both Sounds talk. like one of the arcade machines you'll find in Overwatch. Yeah, that's actually honest. where I got the idea. That's actually where I got the idea from. Is because there's a in like the uh, Hanamura arcade. There's like this thing called Fighters Two, and that or at least is what I think it says. I don't know. That's what I see when I look at it, and I'm just like, huh, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> you guys both are there? Are... Sorry, you go. No, you you go first. I was going to ask if like. If you guys, like, what would your dream roster be for, like, the Dragon Ball Z game that's coming out uh, next year? Oh, Same with Cybermen. What? Um, no. So, uh, I God, think, no. I think the Cybermen's, like, an assist in someone's attacks. I'm not sure. Wait, no, that wouldn't make sense. No one's, never mind. I'm thinking of the other, I'm thinking of the <laughs> Dragon Ball game they have for the uh, 3DS that they made that was garbage. I say that. Do you know how I say, like, the troll people? Uh, whenever I play a Dragon Ball Z game, is I always just play as a Cyberman because it's like always the most garbage character and no one expects it. Oh, so you'd be the guy that would play Dan in Street Fighter Four, wouldn't you? A few times. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I probably only play Dan. Dan yeah. trash of the game, and everyone hates Dan. Dan is. Okay, see, it's not that everyone hates Dan, it's just that he's, like, actually the worst character in the game. Just imagine playing as Ryu, but having everything that made Ryu top tier in this game taken away. So it's like... It's just basically, he's, just, he's, just, he's just basically Ryu, but with but his moves are all worse. Yeah, exactly. I guess the same moveset, but like his... Do less damage and they have less range and everything. Exactly. He's just he's just Ryu but worse. <laughs> which is Jeez. which is ironically what happened to Ryu in season two of Street Fighter V because he's the second worst character now. Really? Yeah. He got um. So the way that they're handle, handling Street Fighter V is that instead of doing like. Every couple of years, they make a new release, like how like there's like Super Street Fighter Four, Street Fi- Ultra Street Fighter Four, and so on. With uh, Street Fighter Five, they're going by seasons. So we're in season two right now, and like every season and like season and a half, there's a big balance patch. So technically, we're in like season two point five now. Well, Ryu got nerfed hard going into season two. I think I'm not sure if it was two point five, but I know it's like it was this season at least. And, well, a lot of characters kind of got nerfed. Like, Chun-Li was top tier, now she's not. Ryu went from mid-tier to, low, to like, bottom tier. And, like, one of the biggest changes was... So, the Shoryuken and, like, moves like it 
used to have invinci invincibility frames when being used in old games and, and during this game. That's gone now. So now Ryu can't just safely uh. Ryu can't just safely drag and punch out of and since he was supposed to be like the all around middle character for that fighting style, he's just not as good anymore. Like the other characters in the game right now that use that fighting style, Akuma and Ken, they have more tools and do just things better. Like Ken's Shoryuken does more damage, his uh air to his Tatsu does is just faster. Then Akuma is just Akuma and he just destroys. So it's like just Ryu just kind of got left behind. Dang, that sucks for Ryu. Yeah. So. Hmm. <laughs> oh boy, Don't love this part of the podcast where we all just go silent. I'm trying to think what about... I was going to say something, but I'm also playing Sonic Mania, which might not be the best idea. How are you enjoying that, by the way? I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. There's um, fast. There were some parts that I was doing really bad yesterday. I don't want to talk about it. Was but, it um, was it Chemical Plant Zone? Yes. <laughs> okay, I feel I feel so much more validated now because I spent like a solid hour on that zone and I hate it. It didn't take me an hour, but like the first like the first level of the chem plant, like I was just like I don't want to be here anymore. It's like I want to go home. Yeah. Did you get crushed by that one, like, yellow block puzzle? Or not puzzle, but a yellow block, like, uh, thing? I'm trying to think what you're talking about. So, like, you go into, like, this, like, this, like, shaft, this, like, it's kind of like an elevator shaft without an elevator. It fill like, the thing fills up with this purple, like, liquid. And there's these spinning, like, platform, or these oh, kind of, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah there, yeah, that, um, I died once or twice in that. Where you gotta hop up on the blocks, and then, like, they spin and turn yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I I took a few little mishaps with that. So my favorite version of Sonic is Deviant Art. You stop that right now. I'm just, do you, what? Oh, Troy, Nani. Troy, do not. <laughs> Did you just say Nani? Nani. <laughs> oh my god! But have you? Don't. What he's saying is that his favorite version of Sonic are like the Deviant Art fan arts. Oh, exactly. Oh, just just don't that, don't don't look at all those. Those? No, I'm well aware. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the reaction I was expecting from that. All right. Actually, though, that reminds me. Did you guys know there was a Sonic fighting game? There is. Oh, oh yeah, that I remember that. It's called Sonic the Fighters. I can remember that one. There's so many Sonic games that, like, I've never heard of. Have like, you... when you were telling me the one the other day, Jay, and we were having a discussion about the, um, Best pirating finish. stuff at the UOK. Oh, like, yeah? I didn't, like, I never heard of that game before in my life until that day you told me about it. Wait, which game? Troy, to be honest, Shadow the Hedgehog is the best, is the best one, hands down. Well, of, of, of the Sonic characters? No, the Sonic games, because it was Shadow the Hedgehog it's... game. You're talking yeah. about that one really like edge lord one where it's like all the guns and Excuse demons. <coughs> how is that? How is it in the Sonic universe? I don't. I, I was so like I played it and I had it, but like I was so confused in like how that game, like the franchise. I'm pretty sure it's non-canon because I I think you can kill Sonic at one point. I, you'd, I think you'd kill. You'd, you'd kill any. You'd kill Sonic Eggman and the alien guy. I remember that the game yeah. was rated. I, I, all they did was just keep Shadow's backstory and get rid, got rid of everything else. Basically, I remember the like when I was a kid. This was back when like Blockbuster was still around. I rented that game from Blockbuster. Blockbuster. <gasps> I rented that game from Blockbuster with my right dad, there. and my dad was like, uh, "This is says is that what." Was that where he uh, rented a game, rented Shadow Hedgehog from Blockbuster? Oh yeah. Oh, but, um, Blockbuster was amazing. I always used to get gumballs from there. <laughs> I used to run like, the gumball machine. Yeah, I used to run games there because my dad would go and get like a movie or two, and I would just like pick up a game I wanted to play that week. Nice. But um, so I rented I rented uh Shadow of the Hedgehog, and my dad was like, "Are you sure about this?" It says language. I'm like, "It's and like it was rated E10 plus low, so like my dad was like, "Yeah, it's probably fine." And, like, I'm sitting there fighting the final, like, Eggman boss that I couldn't beat because I was, like, a dumb five-year-old or something. 
<laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't five because the game came out like. No, it was GameCube. It came out before Sonic 06. I, I was probably five. Anyway, um, and then the shadow is just like the, starts the boss fight, and Shadow just points at him as like, "You're going to hell, Eggman." And it's like, and my little like my little kid brain had like <laughs> never heard this before. <laughs> and like my little kid, uh, was, I just my little kid brain was like, "What? What? What is going on?" My dad's like, "Hey, uh." Why don't you turn the sound off? I'm like, okay. And like, it was just like a couple years ago that I realized why he had me turn the sound off. That game is such a surreal experience sometimes. I love it. Dude, I kind of want to play it on the channel now. <laughs> now that we've <laughs> talked about it. Uh, Sonic mistakes. Sonic it's mistakes. I mean, I already played through Sonic... Uh, I already did played part of Sonic 06 with my friends, and I played through entirely Sonic Mania for the channel. Might as well go do the next step and play Shadow. Oh, what was the, what was, the what was that one fan made game called? Was it like the Sonic Lost Games or something like that? Oh, Sonic.exe. It was a collection oh, no. of like the four. One? Yeah, the re the really weird one. Wait. Oh. Oh no no Sonic. Uh... Sonic Movie Maker. No, Sonic Dream Collection. There it is. That, yeah, that, that was, that was, that was yeah, really that, good. <laughs> bro. That, was, that was an experience, to be honest. Dude, I, I never actually played it. I just watched the Game Drums play it. Oh my god. It was an experience. Like like Cleric said, it was an experience. Experience is an understatement. You're right. It was a lifestyle change. Lifestyle change? What? It, it's exactly how it sounds, Troy. I w I what about you your lifestyle, lifestyle was changed? I, I never yeah, wanted to play a Sonic game now. again. I, it's simple. I never uh, wanted to play a Sonic game again. That was a lifestyle change. <laughs> but yeah, there was there was um, a Sonic fighting game back for like... All I know is it's on Xbox Live. But it was originally on something else, and it's called Sonic the Fighters. And there was one character who had a ranged attack that was better than everyone else because no one could get close to him. Did he have a gun or something? Yeah, he did. He was this like purple like fox thing with a cowboy hat and a gun. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. By the way, I'm Trey... trying to remember if that was like an actual like substance character because like there's a long time. Excuse me, there's there was like a long time where like where Bionicle was still popular and I had all the bi I had like almost all the Bionicle comics and I also had a lot of the comics for Sonic the Hedgehog too. Right. Dude, I used to read those so much. Yeah, I, I used yeah. to really like those old Bionicle comics. Yeah. I had like this is a subscription to like the since, Sonic. Since we've gotten so far off topic from fighting games, let's just talk about Sonic games from now on. <laughs> fighting games oh, who played Sonic in the Black Knight? Uh, or Sonic I, Unleashed. I haven't. I played Unleashed, and I didn't play Black Knight, but I played um the first one in that quote unquote trilogy, aka the like one based on Arabian Nights. It was bad. I'm trying to think. I don't remember the names of all the ones that like I've like played, but there's um I know there's one game I really liked where like. You had to find the Chaos Emeralds and, like, like the main villain was the water creature. And, like, at the beginning, so like, it was, like, that really kick opening. Yeah. And it... I really like that one. That is Sonic Heroes was good, too. I played that one. Uh, Sonic Heroes, like, I loved it as a kid. But, like, two things kind of ruined it for me. One, I was a dumb kid who couldn't really play it that well, so I was always stuck on the second <laughs> level. Two, Tails' voice, to this day, still pisses me off from that game. Oh, oh my. Like, I am passionately angry about Tails' voice in that game, because he sounds like he's mimicking a four-year-old. It's like, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't sound like a four-year-old, it sounds like someone mimicking a four-year-old. And it's just so annoying. What did anyway, you think? Like, do you think it was like mimicking you or something? Like when you were younger, or is it just no, you just, just annoyed like, by the way it sounds? I was annoyed by the way it sounds, but now like 
as I like now that I'm older, I can place like why it annoyed me because it sounded like instead of just getting like a like a, you know like a kid like a ten year old to voice tales, like or like you know a girl because that's what they do when they need to voice in like most like cases when they need to voice act for like a young kid, they just get like a girl to do it or like actually get a kid to do it. They just mm-hmm. had some, they just had it's like to me it sounded like they just had like Joe from accounting come in. And pretend to sound like a kid, and it was horrible. <laughs> oh man! It's like Sonic. Like it was bad. <laughs> <sighs> that that was bad the way you said it too. Yeah, little... I know it was supposed to be. <laughs> it was supposed to be. It is um the game? Oh, I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't think it was the same game of Shadow, but there was one game where, like, the final boss was, like, Eggman, and, like, you had to make... Or maybe it was the same game with the demon. I don't remember. It wasn't a demon, it was an alien. Or Wait, an, Chaos was an me. alien? Talking about Chaos? No, not the aliens from Shadow. We're talking about the one game of Shadow where he had, like, all the guns and, like, all the other stuff, and there was that thing that, like, followed him around and told oh. him to, like, kill everybody. Oh, Shadow the Hedgehog. The Shadow the Hedgehog. So, like, yeah, those were aliens, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought they were, like, demons. Well, they were demons to me as a kid, so... They look, they look like demons. But is that also the same game where, like, one of the final bosses for it is, like, depending on decisions you make, is, like, you fight, like, Eggman in this weird, like, arena? Yeah, that's what that's where the you're going to hell, Eggman thing I talked about earlier came from. Okay, okay. I just want to be sure. Yeah. Claire, did you say something? Cleric? Who did, who did who say what? Did the cleric die? Is he, is he still here? I'm dead. Okay, cool. Oh, Good. Alright, all cool. Now we can take his identity and pretend to be him. Rip. Uh, so, like... So, where, where are your guys' favorite Sonic games? Because, like, since we're talking about Sonic now... I'm, I'm different. Just... I'm, I'm basically indifferent to most of them. All I right. hate most most of them, like a lot of people do, and I don't particularly like most of them, like some people do. My issue is that like my memory is so like scattered at a lot of those games because I played them when I was little. Like I don't remember like like I remember Sonic Heroes. I remember the one I told you about. You guys told me the name of it, but I can't remember. Where Sonic like the Adventure. water monster was. Yeah, Sonic Adventure. Because you also play as the um that one robot Eggman made. Dude, he was game? the best. Okay, so so I am thinking of the right game. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was probably my favorite Sonic game. I was All just right. going to say, like, I've played a lot of Sonic games, and that, you know, the people say they're really bad or just meh a lot of times. And that's, oh. I can say that just because I'm not a fan of Sonic games, so I don't really care about how messed up they are to the lore or whatever. Well, like, see, or, that's kind of where I have to disagree with you, because... So as, like, as, as long as the gameplay just works... It's not completely broken. <laughs> it's okay, and that's it. That's that's all I can really say about it. It's just okay. See, that's also where I have to disagree with you, because going into Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom, let me tell you, the gameplay is not okay. It is bad. <laughs> bad and not good, and not okay. As, as long as the gameplay works, as long as it's, and as long as it's like, okay. It's, like, have you, game. have you ever played Sonic 06? Like, just out of curiosity terrible it is i've seen enough okay. gameplay of that just know that it's awful all right okay just had to make sure that we were on the same page on that one at least <laughs> like shadow the hedgehog i know it's just it's not that great of a game i hate it just because of the fact that i don't really care it much it's... all right that's fair those are a bit weird because it hasn't aged that well but it's Okay, I guess. That's all I can really say about it. Wait, which one? Like, wait, wait which one didn't I age well? It was For Shadow the Hedgehog did not age well. Oh, but I was okay. also going to say that... There's only one thing I can say that I actually genuinely did enjoy about the game, and one thing only, and it's just the fact that I thought it was interesting that, you know, there's, like, multiple endings for, like, how you played missions differently. That was actually for such an old... 
no, yeah, I thought that I thought that was a good idea, but like, and I feel like the way it, it was, but but the the multiple ending things was actually interesting. Yeah, wait, doesn't Shadow kill the president in one of them? I think so. Hold on, give me <laughs> one second. <laughs> I mean, whenever he decides with the aliens, he pretty much commits genocide against everyone else. Does Shadow the Hedge... Okay, when I type in the Shadow the Hedgehog, literally the first thing in Google search is the Shadow the Hedgehog like you quiz. Oh, followed oh. by does Shadow the Hedgehog have a girlfriend? <laughs> oh, wow, that's a... <laughs> Oof, great edge. lore factors we got here. <laughs> On that edge. The edge. Hold on. Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh... Hold on. I'm trying to think. Uh... Okay. Apparently it was just a... I'm not sure. I can't find anything on it. It looks like it was just a Game Grumps joke. But I'm not sure. I could be wrong about that. <laughs> Good lord online. Dude, imagine if they actually had Shadow the Hedgehog kill the president in a game. So, it's so weird thinking about how, like, Sonic was such, like, a beloved series and, like, you know, early stuff. And now it's, like, Sonic's, like... A meme. This? Well, yeah. So it's cause... Actually, now, now to think about Shadow the Hedgehog, I think there's one mission where you're supposed to, like, escort the president, but you can actually kill him in that mission. And that side's with the aliens or something. Oh, okay. So wait, you actually can kill him. Think. Dude, that is... It's been, like... <laughs> played that game. Why? So. Why is that a thing? But, like... Why is it... Why would it not be, though? I mean, let's be real here. I mean, okay, to be fair. For a while... During, like, that time period, like, from, like, Adventure... T after Adventure 2, up until... Whatever, whatever game came before Generations, I think it was... Colors and Lost World, one or the other. Um, up until like whatever that game was, the second team was on serious crack. Like, let's look at Sonic 06. I'm pretty sure they're still on crack. No, nah, I don't know. I mean, besides the whole customizable character thing, the new Sonic game actually looks pretty decent. And it's okay, and... I'm just talking about like. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Sonic Boom. Well, Sonic Boom wasn't made by them. It was made by, um... That shows you how much, how much I'm invested in this franchise. See, ex exactly. I just kind of... I like Sonic to a degree. I think I like his design overall more than anything. But, anyway, like, the Sonic... So in this franchise, I just, like to, I just like to laugh at the really crazy, deranged stuff the internet comes up with about Sonic. Oh, yeah, totally. Also, speaking of... I lost where I was going with that. Give me a second... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. So, Sonic Boom game. Horrible, like, boring game. Completely broken, right? Mm hmm Sonic Boom TV show. Actually amazing. Actually amazing? Like, it's actually amazing. Like, it is, like, I actually find it really funny, and it's, like, cleverly written, and it's, like... You, you, I, you cut out what, what, what do you find to be it? Oh, um, and it's the TV show. The for Sonic Boom. Boom TV show, it's actually really but, good. But the, I've, I've seen clips of it, but there, but there has been clips that made me genuinely laugh. Yeah, exactly. Is that the is that the show where like Sonic's like Danger's my middle name, and Knuckles is like, I thought it was the. Yeah, that it's exactly that. <laughs> okay. Like, oh, that it's, was pretty genius. I, I, thought, I thought the feminist joke that Knuckles made in one episode was pretty great. Do that was that one. That was yeah, I saw that clip. It was actually amazing. So what uh, was the joke? So um. They're playing like soccer or something, and then Amy's I talking about. Probably, I can probably actually find the clip of it and play it real quick. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to nah, explain. That sounds pretty terrible. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to explain it. Side. Hold on, wait. I don't want to get copyright claimed on this video. I'm just. Can we just explain it? Send him a link to it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just kind of explain it for those of you at home. It's um, Amy's like they're playing soccer or something, and Amy's uh talking about how she's going to like break the glass ceiling or whatever, and then. Knuckles, like, you know, by saying that you're going this, by making this a big deal, you're actually, like, making it see, like, less about inclusion and more about gender than it was if you were just playing. And everyone just looks shocked. And then, 
I don't know. Like it's, I'm, I explained it poorly, but it, it's really and, and funny in context. Yeah, he's just like, what? Just because I'm a meathead doesn't mean I can't be a feminist too, or something like that. Just... Yeah. Like <laughs> I think I think what really made it was the look on Tails' face. Is because he looked like everything he knew about Knuckles had just been questioned right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest thing. The Lord Almighty. But yeah, the Sonic Boom, like the TV show, is actually like quality content. Like I actually really enjoy it. Yeah. How should we go? I really from... kind of want to like watch it now. Oh, dude, we should set up a watch together and just have like a like a chat viewing party for it. Funny. Here you go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I love this. Can you imagine, Troy, if we got, like, our, our group chat to watch the Sonic Boom cartoon? Not everyone would watch it, but I think, like, Dan, like, critique it and everything else. Yeah. I just like watching uh, shows that are just easy to laugh at Okay, like, with friends, because it's just fun to make... It's it's more entertaining to watch a TV show if you can just sit there and just make fun of it the whole time instead of actually just... Like watch. the movie, Like the movie Shark Exorcist. Oh god! Don't even don't even remind me of Shark Exorcist. I will remind you about Shark Exorcist because I sat I watched that alone and it was horrible. Then I watched it with friends and it was the best experience ever. Why would you watch that alone? Why would you watch that alone? My god! It was late at night. I was tired. A movie looked interesting. It wasn't. Too mad, man. <laughs> Good God Almighty! <laughs> it was bad. We got so far off topic from the original like talking point. <laughs> This should be a topic for another time, but oh boy, bad movies. That's oh, yeah. a fun topic. Yeah, we should talk about bad movies sometime. Rubber is one of my favorite movies of all time. Dude, I love Rubber. Rubber. Have you ever heard of Teeth? Uh, yes, and I I refuse to watch that movie because it sounds like I would cringe way too much. <laughs> uh, it's it's weird. That's all I can say. I I can imagine. Uh, Keith, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think if I've seen it or not. <laughs> Cleric, would you like to give Troy a little description to remind him, refresh his memory? I'll take that as it's a no. What? I was asking Cleric if he wanted to like give a quick summary of the movie to you. Oh my! Are it's you like you know, it's vagina with teeth. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, that's my summary of the movie. That's all you need to know. I mean, it's accurate. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, when the guy like, loses his fingers to it, it was it was, it was hilarious. That, that sounds, sounds like an L. <laughs> well, yes, Troy, that does sound like an L. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I just can't accurately describe this. The scene It's just hilarious, though. Just the way. It, just the acting, it's terrible, but it's hilarious. It, it sounds pretty bad. <sighs> oh no. It's, it's, all, it, it, it's, it's obviously, you know, the, the, the undisputed champion of bad movies, The Room. No, because I can actually watch The Room and laugh at it for how fun it is. I say Shark Exorcist is work, worse because you can't laugh at it unless you're with friends. If you're I'm alone. That's what I'm saying. It's the Room is the best bad movie ever because it's oh. so fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, I see what you mean. They're making a. Uh... I also don't think that Birdemic is a good is a good bad movie because I, I I think Birdemic is just boring. Well, Birdemic I don't even count as a movie. I count it more as like. I find it fun, uh, to, fun to watch because it, there's no, it's not crazy or stupid like the room. It's just boring. Yeah. Oh. I don't I don't count it as a movie. I count it more as like a. Uh, oh. Little, like, okay, there's a movie I watched last year. I'm sorry, but I'm pretty. I think it's on Netflix, and it's like Zombie Beaver Apocalypse, and it's an outstanding film. Wait, I rate it ten out of ten. Say, oh, Zombie Beaver Apocalypse. I'm oh. pretty sure that's the name of it. I know there's these people that are at, like a lake house, and there's like zombie beavers, and it's like absolutely amazing. I'm looking this up because I do not believe this is real. Like, no offense, I Troy, but... I no, I... <laughs> hey, don't... see enough sci-fi original movies to know that it's real? I don't believe this. I'm sorry. I don't... Oh, it's called Zombievers. Zombievers, excuse me. Hold on. Let me, let me read uh... the IMBD description of it. 
A fun weekend turned into a madness and horror for a bunch of groupies looking for fun in a beaver-infested swamp. Why would you go to a swamp to have fun? Well, it's not actually a swamp. They're at, like, a lake house, and it's just, like, there's beavers there, and they're also, like, infected and, like, zombified. Let's turn that game, then we have no zombie game. Okay, hold on. Well, looking at, like, the character list, there's someone who's just named Creeper at Gas Station. <laughs> then this is hold on storyline Zombeavers is an action packed horror comedy in which a group of college kids staying at a riverside cabin are menaced by a swarm of deadly zombie beavers a weekend of sex and debauchery soon turns gruesome as the beavers close in on the kids riding the line between scary sexy and funny the kids are soon fighting for their lives in a desperate attempt to fend off the horde of beavers that attack them in and around their cabin what the heck it's a great film. I'd watch it again if I got a chance. That is something I would actively. Uh, I mean, I would actively watch that with all, with like all of you if you wanted to. Have you guys ever seen Trolls Two? I've Trolls heard about 2? it, never seen know. it. What's it about? Because like I've heard about it, but I've never actually like seen anything or like seen anything about it. I linked this. That I'll send you a link to the only scene that makes the movie. Or, or the only scene from the movie that's actually entertaining. All right. Uh, oh my god, scene. Oh, oh, is that wait? Is that where that's from? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I that puts a lot of things in the context now. <laughs> I love how it's just titled "A Scene from Troll 2. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so was the re- was the first troll any good? Like heard of it. Hold on. I want to look up their their ratings. Troll one. All right. I just uh, like the fact about troll two is that it's not even about trolls. It's about goblins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why? They just find like a bunch of goblins living in the middle of nowhere in a city called Nilbog. Nilbog. <laughs> Nilbog. Then if you eat food in Nilbog, you turn into plants, and then they eat you. That's... I don't know what to say. Sounds like half of, half of a plotline in one of the Goosebumps books. Exactly. Also, so Troll 1 has an, IMB, an IMDB rating of 4.3. Troll 2 has one of 2.7. So Troll 1 was better, but not good. <laughs> I... I... <laughs> I I have no words. Uh, how did we I get just... here? Oh, I just dropped my flash drive. Great, that's broken now. Or that's an L. <laughs> that's an L. I'm sort of saying that a lot lately. Like this is my new catchphrase. That's really funny. Like I want to. Uh, one, one of my one of my professors at school had his own version of that joke too. What what was it? Basically, at my school, uh, the college I go to, one of the what the part of your grade is based on professionalism. So whenever you would say something stupid in class or something like that, he'd be like, "That takes." Or he's like, "He'd just say professionalism," and that means that like he's like, he, he's making jokes saying like he's gonna take professionalism points off your grade, but he never did. Oh, okay. I'd be, I'd be so upset. I would never talk in that class. <laughs> All right, hold on, just real quick. Everyone, everyone knows a joke. He just said that to like whenever he said something really stupid. It was pretty great. All right. Also, just real quick before we continue, Troy, can you say yeah. that's an L real quick? That's an L. All right, I now have a solid isolated sound clip, and I'm using that for when I play Dark Souls as the Death Noise. <laughs> <laughs> I was just. I hope you're okay with that. But that, uh, that I'm I, perfectly fine. I heard you say that. I just knew that I needed that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be waiting for the montage that you make afterwards, and it's just you just hear like that. It's like those crappy memes where you hear it like someone say something like over and over, and it's just like that's an L, and you just hear like that 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 that, that, that that's an L. <laughs> the B movie, the B movie, but every time they say the word B, it's the B movie, like stuff like that. Except, you know, worded better, because what I said was really stupid. <laughs> so is everything, most things about the B-movie. That, that is true. I want to know how that got made. 
Like, did Jerry Seinfeld just walk in and be like, hey, here's a movie about bees and their rights. And then a studio picked it up. Well, the thing about the movie is that, like, it actually, there was, like, they actually had, like, legitimate reason for making it. They were trying to show more, um, trying to, like, show people that, like, you know, we're kind of, like, losing bees. We're not in a good spot. Like, you need to, like, take care of them. Or, like, you know, Earth's kind of screwed. And, like, you know, it just kind of became a ginormous meme. I okay. actually enjoyed the movie the first time I saw it, and I was also a kid, so I didn't understand the basis of how this woman fell in love with a bee and, like, basically, like, left her boyfriend or her husband for a bee. Yeah. But, like, now that I'm older, I'm like, wow. Uh, so, 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 is that bestiality? You stop that right now. I knew, as soon as you started talking, I knew that was the pun you were going for. You stop that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I would like to also I'd like to point out that for those of you that can't see, Cleric just posted a link in the chat to uh we are number 1 on something called a, fl- a floppatron. It's just a, it's a it's a series of floppy drives and so Oh, oh okay, it was the thing we were talking about earlier. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> Do you know we that went... guy um from Lazy Town or whatever it's called, the we are number 1 guy. He actually is uh, I think at the moment, like there's a lot of stuff where like he was in like, he had like stage four terminal cancer of like something. I don't know what it was, but he's like, he's like cleared for now. Like it, it could come back, but like, I think it was pretty interesting just the amount of like support, like he actually got, like, even though he was a meme and then people were actually like, you know, yeah. rooting for him to be alive and stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. I like a lot yeah. of things that like can occur because of memes. Like I thought that was a pretty wholesome thing to happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, in the, I've heard a lot. On him like a scam artist recently, just because he was, he had terminal cancer. And now he's better for now. For now, <laughs> like that. What? But um, online just calling him a scam artist and stuff now because they're like, oh, he had terminal cancer and he's not dead. He must have been lying about the whole thing. Well, but I don't... that's because people it... donated money to him and they made a GoFundMe for him to so he could get treatment. What what did they expect would happen? It's it's the internet. I mean, people are gonna be mad, salty. Okay, that, I mean, yeah, that's true. I get I gave money to this guy and he didn't die. Fuck that guy. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? He didn't die and I gave him money to die. It's like that one. It's like that one quest in Borderlands Two where the uh, main, where the main villain pays you to kill yourself. Not not you. What? Troy, what'd you say? I haven't, I haven't played that much. Like, I've played some of Borderlands 1 and 2. Like, I know some of the characters, but I haven't played, like, an extensive amount. It, Borderlands 2 is one of my favorite games. Like, but, like, what I was talking about was, at one point, when you get to a certain point, uh, the main villain gives you a quest to jump off a cliff and kill yourself. Well, because, <laughs> because of the way the game works, like, you just kind of respawn and get, um, you get, like, a little bit of your money taken away. So it's like, it's really like no point to it, but it's it's just a fun little quest. Hmm, how did okay. how did how did we go from button mashing to talking about the B movie in Borderlands? Well, I mean, this is a podcast. I mean, what do you expect? This is episode what two? Yeah. I mean, how, how much worse can we get? Uh, probably a no, lot. This is episode fifty. What do I have to cut each different topic into its own episode? No. It's a podcast. Leave it all the monstrosity that it has become. This is a well. I mean, there is a reason why I named it the Audio Dumpster Fire. Fair enough. <laughs> I love that. I love that term, dumpster fire. That was definitely. You... That's a definitely fun one. Yeah. Uh, I got that term from a uh, back in like 2014, whenever Attack on Titan first got really big. Uh. When Team Four Star made the uh, Attack on Titan abridged, like for that one episode before it got taken down, I remember uh, I forget who it was, but someone said uh, called it a called something a dumpster fire. And I've just been using that term ever since, just because I love it so much. Nice. Yeah. And we we just got sent a video of someone playing Doom on a printer, so I'm gonna watch that as soon as this is over. Oh, no, that's not Doom playing Doom on a printer. That's I'm um, playing the Doom soundtrack on a printer. Oh, okay, my bad. 
It's still impressive either way. Yeah. What, so, speaking of, of like, put, playing games on things, like, just kind of as, like, a closing topic, what do you guys think of the Xbox One X? I think it's good for the, like, I think they did good when they talked about it. They're like, okay, this is not for, like, the general, like, audience. This is for, like, people who, like, these are, like, for your definitely committed and hardcore gamers. Like, you know, like, it's an expensive console with a lot of specific stuff. Like, if you're just going to, like, play games casually, you're not going to play enough. Like, it's not worth the money. Like, we're still going to produce, like, the Xbox, you know, one. Like, this is, like, the... So like big. I think like I I do enjoy that aspect and like idea of that they made with it, but I don't know. It's better though. I mean, hey, they could have been like their 2013 E3 where they just kept talking about how it can watch TV and is like an all around instead of a console. Yeah, that was, that was bad on their part. Yeah. Cleric, what are your thoughts? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know about the Xbox One X. Oh, no, I don't have that. I just have an Xbox One, and I haven't been paying attention to any new consoles they've been coming out with. No, I meant, like, what is your, like, thoughts on the One X? Because it's basically just the Xbox One, except more powerful. Here's what I think about it. So, let's see. So, it's Xbox One X, and so if you abbreviate it, X out the front, then, uh... No, if you abbreviate it, it's just straight Xbox. And, like, this console... That's what I was trying to say, yeah. It's basically just abbreviated back to Xbox. That's actually pretty cool, honestly. I didn't even think about that. But the one thing that's, like, definitely that, like, I think should be noted about this console is that, um, it, um, it can now compete with, like, certain, like, PCs. Like, this is the first time a console has the capability to compete with, a, you know, computer processors. Like, you know, not, like, the most high-tech stuff, but, like, at least mid-average to, like, some higher up type things like it has like great potential all right yeah, i can see it so all right before we close out anything you two would like to say is like a closing mm, i don't think so how long is this, this podcast is over an hour wasn't it it's like an hour and like 20 minutes right now an hour and a half i think yeah not bad not bad cleric anything you'd like to say to piss people off for this episode <laughs> Oh boy. So, all right. If you guys want, we have a link to the Discord in the description. If you enjoyed this podcast, uh, you should subscribe for more. I hate saying that, but that's kind of because it sounds generic like every other YouTuber, but you should because really there's no other way to find us. We don't have like a SoundCloud or anything. Uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed. Have a nice day. Our. <laughs> I just barely caught that.